Hello and welcome by EA's Art Channel. My name is Jelki van Wiesma and today I'd like to share with you how I painted this uh, painting of a deer with a moon and with mushrooms. And it is obviously a, a surrealistic painting. And if you uh, did uh, watch my uh, other tutorial I posted over about a week or two weeks ago, I, uh, there in that tutorial I did show you how I designed this painting in Photoshop. And today I'm going to show you how I actually painted this on this canvas. And I'm really excited about this because this is an other, uh, quite a different approach than I uh, usually do. And uh, I really like this, I really like it um, uh, very much because I can now put in more of um, uh, pictures, basically pictures and, and compositions that I have in my head. And because I can uh, adjust um, the photos in Photoshop and uh, draw in Photoshop, uh, on those photos I can create my own reference pictures basically and therefore it allows me to make uh, references for surrealistic paintings which I really like uh, making and uh, painting and drawing so I think this year I'm gonna make a lot of more of this kind of this style of uh, paintings and drawings and I hope you like it uh, too and as usual if you have any questions about this subject or something else please leave them in the comment section below and um, yeah, this uh, painting has already uh, been um, asked for to be on a, a cover of a book, or at least in a, uh, uh, a chapter chapter in the book. <laughs> and um, so that's very nice. And that is a book that is my husband is working on uh, currently. And we didn't discuss that. Yeah, and obviously I knew that he was uh, writing something, but. Um, uh, something about the book, of, obviously, but uh, yeah, it was kind of funny. I, I've, uh, he found it uh, very uh, suitable for uh, one of the those uh, chapters to be uh, on the uh, on the cover. So, yeah, that's very nice and very um, special, if you ask me. So, uh, therefore, it's uh, already it was very special painting for me, and this is also a, a very special uh, element, of course. So. Um, well, um, before I talk uh, more about uh, this painting, this style of painting, I first wanted to show you this, this tutorial about how I painted this painting. So let's start that tutorial. And as usual, I start filling in the, the complete background with a dark solid color. And I'm leaving this, I'm leaving uh, uh, a lot of this color show up in my end uh, piece. But I mixed in a very dark reddish brown. It shows up uh, as black, or it may show up as uh, quite as black, but it's uh, it obviously of it is a, a very uh, dark brown. And what I did, I uh, drew in my drawing, and I started with the moon because that's a very um, uh, important subject of this painting. It will influences all of the other details that are in this painting because of the color of the the moon and the light that will show up. Uh, on the subjects around it, so on the mushrooms, on the deer, and on this antlers, and that kind of stuff. So therefore I, I like to start it uh, with, also, uh, with the moon and the colors, and also I like to start with the airbrush part um, earlier on in these paintings, because otherwise I have to uh, cover the other subjects uh, quite, uh, quite a bit, and that will take a lot of time. So if I can avoid that, I will do that. And obviously at, at the moon is the furthest back, as uh, I started with the background and then the moon were uh, the furthest uh, back in this painting. So therefore I like to start uh, also with the subjects that are the furthest uh, away from the main subject, I could say. So, uh, so therefore I started with, with the moon. And on its endless you see a, uh, a reddish brown and I started uh, right away with, that, with a brown color. Normally you see me using more that mid-tone gray. And, but I didn't do that now because the endless were uh, already dark. I had a uh, dark brown there and I could work from, from there. So therefore I uh, did leave it and I just uh, building up my details slightly lighter colors and I'm glazing and building up like I usually uh, uh, normally do, I should say. And um, because of the color of this moon, it's a very warm, uh, color almost uh, like a song I, and it, this was really what I uh, was going for that warm rich color and uh, that uh, like I said it has a big influences on the rest of the painting that light will show up so therefore you see me using uh, a, a, especially later on in this uh, painting a lot of that orange color and uh, like I do now I uh, use a yellow that is the base for um, the orange glow it, uh, it 
the, the, the yellow makes the orange a bit brighter. So therefore I like to s uh, start with a yellow and then came uh, over that with, a, with the orange. But before I used the yellow, maybe you notice that I started with white. And that is because the uh, yellow and orange are quite translucent. So if I hadn't put uh, white in first, the white details, that uh, yellow or orange color wouldn't show up as well as it does now. So therefore to save me some time, I start with white and just glaze over my colors. I can ch um, change those colors uh, quite easily. And also, if you like to see uh, the details a bit better, I would suggest to uh, watch this on full screen. I uh, did that uh, a few minutes ago, and then you can uh, even better see what I'm doing. So if you are interested in, in how I'm painting those details and how I glaze those, de those details, I suggest to uh, watch it on full screen. But once again, on these mushrooms, I also start with uh, quite some warm colors and I introduce uh, a, a bit of cooler colors um, sometimes for the shadow part, but not as much for this time. Like I said, it it all comes down uh, uh, on the influences of the moon. It's a very warm, lighted painting, so I would, uh, I would really stick with that. So therefore I uh, chose my colors, uh, warm colors. And I also like magentas with uh, orange and browns and warm brown colors. So therefore, I, for the shadow parts, I also use those colors, but just a bit darker. And of course, I use my unbleached titanium white, which you see me using here. That is a wonderful color, a wonderful base color for lighter portions of uh, paintings. And you can easily glaze over it and adjust the colors. It is just uh, a, um, yeah, a, a, one of the colors I use a lot in my painting. So therefore I just buy it in a separate uh, container because I use it uh, quite a lot. And uh, it's just a matter of building up and building up those details. I think this painting took me the longest of all the paintings that I did. Maybe I'm wrong, but it, 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 I know it's, uh, it should be in the top five of paintings that took me the longest time. And I, th I really think that this one uh, took me the longest time because of all those details. And I really would um, take my time, even though I'm, uh, uh, when I'm most of the times when I'm halfway uh, uh, at the painting, painting in my details, I'm like, oh, I, <laughs> I wish that this painting was finished, yet because I uh, spent hours on it. But yeah, if I rush it, it will not show up. The end result will not um, be as good as when I uh, take my time and building up and building up. So I know that from experience, so I take my time, even though sometimes I would like to rush it. But never rush your paintings or drawings, because in the end it will show up and it also will show up if you took your time. Everything will uh, be much nicer to look at because you have spent so much time on those details, on those colors. So once again, I uh, did realize that it, it really takes some time sometimes. And that sign is kind of funny, but yes, it does. And also from the moss, I, uh, I didn't paint uh, as much moss um, than I did the other subject. So I uh, had to figure out a little bit how I liked that moss. And I would, um, I really, my goal was for a moss that was uh, yeah, quite um, not very smooth. There, there, there had to be happening quite a lot. It, was, it had to be uh, very alive, a very, um, yeah, growing in different directions, a lot of details. So therefore I started with quite enough, a, a rough base with very different lines. So I have that nice texture uh, to start uh, layering over, layering my other details and colors. I will do, do that later on because I just painted in the other layer and uh, on the layers from the moss. And now I, as you can see, I continued uh, to painting in the details on the deer. I do that because now I can see where those details should go. I now know where I will, uh, will have the moss, where I like the moss. So I now can paint uh, the deer because the moss is growing uh, over the deer, or it is sitting on the deer, I should say. I, I'm not in, uh, implying that it always uh, was there, but uh, he has it on his head now. So it is laying on his coat, and therefore I'm starting now uh, painting the deer, painting in his coat, so I can uh, later on painting over a little bit of um, details from the moss over that coat. That will make it look uh, much more uh, yeah, realistic, even though it's surrealistic, but it uh, may, uh, will make more sense. 
and it is uh, easier to do the, this way because it's acrylic and acrylic paints dry quite quickly so therefore if I uh, would do this in oils I had uh, more time and probably could finish the moss um, a little bit more than I did now but uh, yeah like I said I, uh, I for me it's easier to do it this way and as you can see on the side of his face the moss is just disappearing a bit because I'm painting over uh, fur but I will come back and uh, paint that moss back in again but now I just have a general idea where, that, where everything should go and I have uh, some tutorials on how I paint fur so if you want to know more about that I will uh, have a link pop up by now so you can check that out but I still use the same technique I never changed it this is what, uh, what I really like to uh, how to paint fur because it um, it suits me very well uh, there may be uh, other ways to yeah absolutely there are other ways to paint fur but this is a, a how i like it and what i basically do is make texture it doesn't seem um it doesn't look at fur uh, right now as you can see it is all uh, all about uh, texture it doesn't make sense but it will because i'm um later on because i'm glazing over my color and i will come back making the same uh, kind of brush strokes that fur indications and I always like, of basically always work with clumps of fur, never the individual uh, hairs. I only do that for the highlight portions uh, at, uh, at the end of the painting. But now I'm working in clumps of fur. And quite translucent because I'm going to glaze over it. Then I'm uh, painting uh, new clumps of fur over that section again. And so I, um, I continue that and build up my, build up my fur uh, that way one very important thing uh, when you paint fur is the direction of the fur it's very very important because that will give the uh, indication of the body and the shape of the body so if you don't do that correct you may end up with a uh, funny looking animal because the fur isn't right and uh, it ha the direction has to be right not every single fur uh, section has to be right um, but um, the, the direction and the length of the fur are very important but as you obviously know on his head the fur is shorter than on his body so I am paying uh, quite a lot of attention about, um, about the um, length of the fur not as much as the colors yet that will come I'm just glazing and glazing till I uh, am at uh, yeah I'm using the colors that I like but now I'm uh, trying to be close and I'm just building up and I, uh, as you maybe uh, have noticed, I uh, started out with a um, purplish brown color once again, once that warm color again, because that is uh, all, like I said, uh, influenced by the moon. And I'm really, really happy with this painting. It's one of my, it's my most favorites at the time, at this time. But, and that is also because I really liked how it came up, of course. But I try to. Um, include more of a story in my art uh, before I, uh, I before this uh, this painting I just took with references and reference photos and once in a while I did paint a little bit um, more surre surrealistic but not as much and I just took with the uh, reference photos from uh, most of the time animals that I liked but I always and that's why I started uh, making art uh, try I always try to tell a story with my art but I I knew that I could uh, do a better job with it but I wasn't at that um, at that stage I should say I wasn't uh, ready to do that because um, as you can imagine this took me quite a, a time to get a good references I had to basically make my own references for this painting and before I, I, uh, I, I just didn't know how to do it and I, I couldn't get it I have those images in my mind but I couldn't get them on paper so therefore I am um, for me it is very very handy to uh, learn uh, at least a uh, quite a bit about Photoshop and how to um, yeah, how to make uh, from for example for for four or five photos one references with elements that you like so uh, I take some ele elements from one photo and put them in uh, another and it has to make sense so it uh, has to be uh, at the right uh, length and uh, the colors have to be right and all that sort of things and you can do that with photoshop but it takes some time to uh, to learn it and uh, i am uh, still not absolutely not an expert on it but i can i can now get i can now do what i want so therefore uh, 
I'm really really happy because like I said I really want to tell a story with my paintings that is just what I like and uh, I have a, a sort of a kind of a, a lot of the, <laughs> these kind of images in my head just yeah some of some are symbolic some are telling a story like I said or some are um, indicate uh, indicate a uh, emotion or a feeling or, or some some uh, thing of a sort but um, yeah I think now I can do that so I think I really think I'm <laughs> going to make more of these kind of paintings it's so much fun it's really really is and I'm still still working on it fur like I said earlier on, I'm really taking my time and building up my details sometimes I'm losing some details because I did have to uh, I had a uh, layer I, I was layering and the, the paint was a little bit too thick um, so, so therefore some details are um, get, did get lost but that that is don't doesn't matter that much because you can uh, really paint them in easily again but you just have to start uh, glazing uh, once again of course but it's doable it, it uh, yeah and when I'm started painting I thought I would never get it uh, right again it is doable you can just paint over it it takes some extra time but that's basically all and here also on his nose and his uh, beak I am uh, no, <laughs> on his mouth I'm sorry uh, I'm really uh, using a really a quite a lot of different colors this is also one thing that I found very important to use quite a bit of different colors even colors that don't don't show up in my reference I include them to, to make it much more richer and to it is a painting it is not a photo so I can use those colors and I like those colors so therefore uh, if you are watching this I would suggest try to experiment with more colors in your paintings if you uh, are thinking your paintings could use something they are not quite as alive I uh, I can maybe can I can say but and uh, you struggle with that I uh, really suggest to m use more colors more different colors it helped it helped my works quite a lot to get to yeah get that richer more alive feeling if you ask me it's it's hard for me to put in words but uh, once you try it or uh, you will see the differences and um, like I said it for me it works very very well I really like it and also the purples, the purple, the magentas. I I found them uh, really suitable with the oranges and especially with the browns. The browns are getting really warmer when you're mixing those colors within uh, the brown. And um, yeah, I, I really like that. Sometimes I just use black for my uh, layers or for my mixes, but I, um, it depends. If it's just an under layer, I just use uh, Mars black. But if I'm glazing, I like to use the ivory black, and that is because the ivory black is more translucent than the Mars black. So if I have to do a shadow part, is this in this stage that I'm uh, now? What I do under his uh, chin, uh, for example, I am using uh, ivory black, not Mars black, but ivory black with quite some water. Because, uh, like I said, that's the more translucent uh, black. Otherwise, I would lose uh, too many details. Like I said, now I try to let it pop more, that moss. Those nice um, light tips of the moss. That indicates uh, growing tips. That the moss is growing. And the growing tips are also always... Um, well, for uh, as far as I know, but on moss, it's uh, just like plants. It's always a little bit of lighter in color. So therefore, I like to use uh, once again the uh, unbleached satin uh, white and glaze over my glazes, and those uh, tips of the uh, moss will uh, show up. And uh, like I said, the, those indicate the growing tips of moss. At least the moss that I'm painting. But I think it's almost on every uh, tree plant. The, the new growing tips are always a bit lighter uh, color wise and I thought it would be nice to uh, get w at least one leaf in it just to get that uh, forest feel a little bit with uh, with suited uh, with a moss and also with a deer in my opinion deers are uh, living all always close to a, a forest or even in the forest so therefore uh, I thought, uh, thought it would be nice to uh, also get a uh, leaf in it and also have some mushrooms and uh, one snail as you see on the left side some just some elements that I uh, quite often found uh, find in in, uh, in the forest and I'm just building up and now I'm putting in some shadows in that moss again to get it a more uh, alive more 
three dimensional uh, or two dimensional um, uh, feeling and the shadows are very important and I always have the tendency to be a little bit on the light side of my shadows so I always have come back on my shadows to make them darker it's just like I uh, am a little bit too afraid to get it as dark as it needed because in the beginning it's hard to adjust your of uh, to judge your colors how light your light should go and how dark your dark should go but that's that's okay because you can easily adjust it later on by glazing over over it again and once again if i do that most of the times i'm using ivory black if i have to be really really dark i will use that mars black uh, for example uh, the lines around his eyes have to be very opaque so therefore i like to use my mars black and i'm talking about the liquitex basics if you don't and uh, most of the times i'm um, I'm uh, linking those in my tutorials, um, but if you didn't know, I'm uh, always using the Liquitex basic paints. And maybe I think with other brands, uh, you probably end up um, having this saying uh, that the ivory is um, more translucent than the Mars Black, but I'm not sure about that. But this is uh, the end piece. It's uh, obviously a photo uh, token uh, take, yeah, token from my uh, original uh, painting. And once again, the colors are very, uh, yeah, quite different than it shows up in my tutorial. That is because of the, my daylight light lamps. And I, uh, I keep saying that because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to adjust it. But uh, yeah, this is uh, the closest how it looks in in uh, in daylight. And I hope you like it. So yeah, like I said in the intro, I um, did uh, want to talk a little bit more about the style of the paintings. Um, in the intro, I talked about the images, uh, sort of images that I have in my head. They are uh, um, more a uh, of more a of a dreamy kind, I could say, or a dream world. Of how doesn't matter how you put it. Um, it well, it doesn't matter to me. But yeah, I find it uh, very hard to get started. Um, something that hasn't a clear reference is for it because um, and that has not that I'm afraid to paint those kind of uh, images but um, because you it's very hard to combine uh, stuff that are, are recently not in one uh, same picture if that makes sense and for example the biggest struggle that I had was uh, lights and darks colors and how colors should get as one piece in a painting because otherwise they stand out too much and if that uh, if it stands out too much it uh, will look like for example like a, a sticker put on uh, a canvas but it has to be one piece so i think i have um, learned how to adjust those colors even uh, only uh, also in painting but also with photoshop so that helped and also um, i did follow quite some tutorials on uh, how to use photoshop and I am not an expert on that, but I now know how to combine uh, stuff and how to make it bigger, how to make it uh, smaller, how to get it in the right place, how to adjust the colors on one particular area that needs some adjustments. And also, it's still uh, it's kind of hard for me to get a light and dark uh, right, but also because it's too realistic, it not is always that wrong. If that makes sense, I'm not saying that you can uh, paint uh, um, away and don't uh, watch those lights and those stars but you have to watch them but also you are kind of free there's some some space you can um, yeah paint in surreal surrealistic because um, uh, you don't have to be as correct as in a, a reference photo if you co kind of copying a uh, a photo it's not copying uh, except the photo of course but um, you have a uh, more freedom in it because uh, like I said it's surrealistic and um, that's how I uh, in, um, how I that's my way of looking uh, to it but you may have a completely different uh, opinion on that that is okay it's just me it's just how I uh, um, kind of try to find my way uh, uh, with surrealism so um, that's very important because it's, it's very uh, personal how you look at uh, uh, the, this kind of paintings but uh, yeah like I said it um, it's basically opened a whole new world for me I, uh, I, I, I just it's, I found it very nice to uh, work surrealistic so I therefore I will make a lot of more paintings in that um, in this um, kind of um, 
yeah, how do you put it in this, no, not this level, in this world of surrealism, <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, and also, of course, I'm still working on my uh, portrait theory, series, um, and I will make a portrait, another portrait very soon. So I will finish that, obviously. I don't uh, want to leave it as now. I, it is a project, and I will finish that project. Like I always finish my paintings and drawings, because I think that it's very important. Even though you don't like it as much as uh, when, you thought, or when you started the painting, if you ask me, Try to finish it, because you will uh, learn a lot. So therefore I will always uh, try to um, finish my paintings and drawings. Well, that's said and done. I have um, soon, very soon, something different on my channel. I'm trying out uh, different things. I will put it uh, very shortly, because uh, this tutorial will be way too long otherwise. But um, a sort of uh, live studio sessions in my while I'm working. So I will... Uh, record uh, real-time clips and we'll make some tutorials out of that. I'm just trying it out. I hope you like the concept. Uh, I think I'm gonna like it and I'm doing that because otherwise I don't have enough time to get uh, enough tutorials on my channel. You may have noticed that I'm a really, um, of, uh, re I'm a kind of behind schedule and I would like to upload more but I don't have more con uh, content now because uh, of my daily job and I will talk a lot about it in those uh, studio sessions. I am uh, looking for a right name for those uh, sessions but uh, I will figure something out. So, But that is uh, also uh, coming up very um, soon. Uh, and I think that I have covered now everything that I wanted to, uh, to explain to you, to uh, talk about. For now, thank you for watching and also for the new subscribers, please be welcome on my channel. If you're watching this tutorial and you didn't have already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe because I think it's a uh, compliment for my work, so I really uh, would like uh, you to subscribe. And uh, like always, I will try to get uh, good content on my channel. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And for now, thank you for watching and if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope to see you at one of my next tutorials. Bye-bye!